I'm telling you, I can't get over there until like three, four days from now. I mean, you just leave me. Yeah, you can fuck up. You can leave me. Yeah, I think you can leave me. I think what was the hint a mess up to? Really? Yeah. I don't see enough of it. Well, it's all information you want to do that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't see no machine. I didn't think you wanted to go to the grid. Go ahead. Oh, of course.
control inside of the condition compartments is necessary for efficient operation. Every time a door is open, moisture will enter the cavity through either natural convection or forced air movement. The moisture will eventually condense on the coldest surface in the cavity. Does anybody have a guess? Now, the answer is there. But what would be the coldest component in the cavity? Since the evaporator and the refrigerator slash freezer is well below the freezing point of water, what's the freezing point of water? Uh, frost will form on the evaporator. With a paste style evaporator that relies on convection to maintain temperature, frost buildup affects the efficiency of heat removal but will, but will not prevent the system from maintaining temperature. The biggest issue of, is the loss of storage space as the thickness of the frost increases. I've seen sometimes that the frost will increase so much that it will actually crack the cover. The evaporator cover will actually crack the cover. You know what I'm saying? It will push, it will grow so far, it will prevent the door from closing properly. Or fresh door bottom must. Okay. As the amount of frost builds, the airflow through the evaporator will decrease. I want to say that again. As the amount of frost builds, right there, air that travels through here. As the amount of frost builds, the airflow through the evaporator will decrease. More frost, less airflow. Okay? You spoke about the importance of airflow in the refrigerator. You remember that? Yeah. In fact, you were the gentleman who wanted to know the return duct. So you spoke about the importance of that airflow. Alright? Uh, if the evaporator becomes completely clogged, the airflow will stop and coolant's performance will decrease to the point where the system cannot maintain the desired temperatures. And those desired temperatures are what? Zero uh, plus minus three. And? 38, 37 plus minus three. All right. Back in the days, people used to just turn off their fridge. So they take like a scraper and just scrape off. But you know what started happening? In? People was opening the holes in the evaporators, causing leaks. All right, the use I can't hear. The use part is my mouth. The use of scrapers, ice picks, or chisels must be avoided. Um, the chance of damaging the evaporator is too great to risk the forcible removal of the frost in an attempt to speed up the process. So people would try to, rather than just you know, open the door and let it be frost, they try to speed it up. But again, that leads to evaporator puncture and, and risk that you don't want to take. Alright? So manufacturers decided let's stop doing that. Let's get into something called automatic defrost. Right? Automatic defrost. That's what these refrigerators today they automatically defrost. Alright? Let's talk about, uh, since the process of manually defrosting the refrigerator is time consuming and the frost affects system efficiency, most modern refrigerators incorporate an automatic defrosting system. All right? In an automatic defrost system, a heater and a thermostat is added to the evaporator assembly. 
right here, they put a little box metal right on here. They put a box on it. And then they put a heater alongside the box. Alright? Uh And the heater is energized. I said that a refrigerator has two modes. Cooling, that's it. You don't got a third option. Go to the B. The heater will heat the evaporator and melt the frost. The thermostat, aka bond metal, aka defrost thermostat, or whatever name you hear, defrost terminator, or whatever. The manufacturers want to call it. Uh, it monitors the evaporator temperature. And when the heat is sufficient, the heater de energizes. Consider the bimetal nothing more than a safety mechanism. When the temperature rises too much due to the heater, it will de energize the heater. Let me say that one more time. The bottom metal, it's like the, like the safety metal. When the heater is energized, obviously the temperature will rise. When the temperature rises too much, the bottom metal will be energized the heat. I'll say that look. The heater, oh, one more time. The heater will heat the evaporator and melt the frost. The, ther the thermostat monitors the evaporator temperature, and when heat is sufficient, the heater de energizes. Okay, it turns off. This thermostat is often called a defrost termination thermostat or defrost terminator. The target temperature is usually between 40 and 60 degrees. At that point, the, the, the thermostat, and I'll show you a quick, we haven't gotten into electrical yet, but I'll show you a quick, quick draw. Here's your heater. Here's your thermostat. Do you gentlemen know what series is parallel? Yeah. Series is simple. Series, you got a battery, you got this guy, that guy, if one of them go out, the whole thing dies. That's what it's in. in a nutshell. They put this thermostat in series with that heater. So when this thermostat reaches that 40 to 60 degree, it will open. So in theory, it will open the circuit, preventing the heater from being energized. It's a safety mechanism. Think if they did it and that heater stayed on indefinitely. It burned the house down. Well, at least the fridge had a bit on You know what I'm saying? So manufacturers had to put something in here to, for safety purposes. So again, the thermostat is in series with this defrost heater. The heater melts all of the frost off of the heater. Okay? Any questions so far? Okay. The water that results from the defrost process is often directed to a condensate tray 
in the base of the refrigerator. I've shown you guys that. Remember I referred to you earlier about the drain tubes where they go in that condensate tray, condensate base. We all spoke about that. I had a call one time. It was in Atlanta. It was an LG uh, French door. LG, and I wasn't even LG organized. Let me, let me put that out there. LG was so adamant just to get somebody out there that they reached out to them. He said, we service this gentleman. The gentleman was complaining of a foul smell of the nose. And he said he opened it up, he put bacon soda, and couldn't find the smell. Well, come to find out, when I got there and I started looking, I couldn't see anything, but I smelled it too. When I pulled the fridge out and I removed the tray, I saw a dead rat with like injuries. I guess he tried to, he got hit up by a uh, fan trying to drink water. That's what I'm thinking. But he was dead and, and kind of mangled up. So you could tell like he got hit by the fan or something trying to drink water. And it died in the, in the Plate. So, so maybe, maybe he didn't have the kick plate on the bottom. You went all the way from here to Atlanta? No, no, no. My career began in San Diego. Okay. And then no, I didn't really like it. Went to the room, so I'm settled here. All right. So again, when this. So again, that evaporator, when that heater is energized, those water droplets, they, 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 you know, they go into the drain, the hole. Remember, we showed you the hole. And what did we talk, talk to you about how to clean that out? Steamer? Or, or nitrogen? Or nitrogen, you know? Everybody, guys, when the falls come in, hey, I gotta, this is the stuff. You getting the answers now. All right. Uh, this flat tray is placed in the airflow around the compressor and the condenser. This warm air will speed evaporate, uh, evaporation of the condensate. All right, the dry stuff is all done. Now we can get into more realistic and more electrical stuff. It's a little board. This. This, this, this kind of, uh, is your evaporator. Notice this defrost heater indicated by this black line. Here. This is a GE glass style. This is a glass style heater. I'll show you what that looks like. You're gonna see two common styles. You're gonna see a cow rod metal and a glass style. Is it neither? This is that GE glass style. Right there. This is your cow, bro. This is that glass. Actually, it's frigid. All right. So that's this here. Okay. 120 is 120 volts is a plot. The heat that's produced melts this. Where's the picture I had? Melts all that frost off. The image I had. Uh, Right there. Let's see what I frost. They put the heater lower down here in the lower part of it. So that when it goes into uh, defrost, the water will collect down in here, go into the drain, down to the condensate pan. All right? Here's your defrost thermostat. All right. Now, some default systems are based on elapsed time. For example, your timers, your 
pretty, you run that in the middle. Eight hours on, 30 minutes off. Write that down, time for eight hours on, 30 minutes off. That means that for eight hours, your compressor's running. Your condenser fan is running. Your evaporator fan is running. And for 30 minutes, 120 volts is being supplied to the heater element, which they put a defrost terminator or bimetal in series with it to act as a safety mechanism. So if the heater stays on too long or warms up, that thermostat will open, killing the 120 going to the heater element. We're all there. I got to leave anybody behind. Okay. So, in time chosen as an interval between defrost when the timer, okay, we spoke about, okay. So that's one. It lasts it last time. That's one style. Another style is, uh, adaptive. This is a different technology that Whirlpool came up with. With the decreased cost of logic, circuits, and controllers, again, technology, these components being so relatively cheap, these little resistors are like 50 cents, you know, a quarter. Like, with the uh, decreased cost of logic, circuits, and controllers, a more efficient method of controlling the defrost frequency has been introduced by many manufacturers. This system measures the time it takes from the start of the defrost cycle until the defrost terminator opens. So in layman terms, this board or this uh, logic circuit, this, this board is actually monitoring from the time it goes into defrost to the time that it comes out of defrost. It's other things that it monitors as well, and we'll talk about that now. Okay, the theory behind this adaptive system is that an evaporator with a heavier frost flow will take a longer time to reach the target defrost temperature. An evaporator with a light low frost will reach the defrost temperature sooner. An ideal defrost time is chosen that should be reached with a frost flow that is neither too light to warrant defrost nor too long to affect efficiency. So in, in layman's term, they're trying to find that happy medium where they defrost it just enough and not too long to maintain that light frost. Maybe you don't have to have it on 30 minutes. Maybe you only need 12. That's what this adaptive, doing all of these calculations, all right? After power is applied to the adaptive defrost system, the first defrost will occur usually six to eight hours of cumulative runtime, depending on the manufacturer. Okay, so that's why I say when you arrive to a job, it's always critical to have the, the, the refrigerator plugged in to allow the Freon to circulate through the unit and allow the Freon to circulate through the evaporator. So, brother Casey, I want to show you something. The first defrost will occur usually six to eight hours. So if you get to a job and it's not cooling and they just plugged it in, that don't help. Not allowed to run for few hours. All right. Uh, lost my place. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, guys. Okay, six to eight hours, okay. This amount of, um, okay, if the door, uh, I'm just going to skim through this and read you the important stuff. It's important to read this, guys. Okay, but that's, that's one style. The adaptive uses door opens. How many times the door was open? How long was it in defrost the last time? How long was the compressor running? It's just, it's adaptive. It's using all of these information 
to determine a cost efficient defrost time. If it's eight minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, it's adaptive based on all the information that's received. That's it, in a nutshell. And then you have the other one that's called timing. You're talking about defrost and the different types of defrost technologies. Look, we said it, just so I don't use y'all. Look, we said we have timer, and we said we have ADC, adaptive control, adaptive heat force. All right? There's some other ones too. You got your board, they use the misters. This is important, this heat force stuff. All right? All right. Because of energy consumption regulations, most of the refrigerators that still use a defrost timer are wired that only the timer advances when the compressor is running. That's called cumulative run. This is important. Most of the refrigerators that still use a timer are wired that only the timer advances when the compressor is running. Press is running. That timer has a motor. Well, we know based on that if the press is running, that's a diagnostic tip right there. All right. All the models that were produced, no, let's not talk about all the models. We're not working on all the models. In a continuous run configuration, the timer motor wired directly across 120 power source. That's continuous. That means the timer is running regardless. Eight hours on, eight hours off, eight hours on, eight hours off. That's continuous. But, I'm just showing y'all the different types. Again, this part is boring, but we're going to get into what y'all want, uh, schematics and all that. But we got to know like the history of this stuff. Jobs, anytime the refrigerator is plugged in and depending on the internal timer gear, it initiates a defrost every 8, 10, or 12 hours. Okay? During the cooling mode, there are one to four uh, contacts, one to four are made. Okay, let's talk about the cooling mode now. Cooling mode. One to four. You got line coming in. Going into the timer, bypassing this circuit here. It bypasses that circuit. It's going rather to my compressor and my fan circuits. That's when I'm in my cooling mode. I said it has two, cooling and heat force. When it's in cooling, that's what's going on. When it's in defrost, look at my circuit now. Look at what my, my components are in the jobs. My timer and my, I'm sorry, my heater and my thermostat. What happens when that thermostat opens? Correct, it starts. Okay, what temperature range did we say? 42. Okay. We're going to look at a physical timer here now in a, in a few seconds. Okay, so that's kind of like timer. Again, just in a nutshell, when the timer is, 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 is in its cooling, the fans and compressors will be out of the When it's in its defrost, heater, and bottom. In a nutshell, the timer. So if you can get that from here, I'm okay with that. All right? Now we're moving into, again, this adaptive defrost. 
Again, it gets its name from the ability to adapt to the defrost time and frequency to the ambient conditions in the customer's home. Again, that computer uses a chip that monitors compressor runtime, door openings, length of the time the heater was energized in the previous defrost. All right? And some of the newer and more advanced, the chip may even monitor ambient temperatures. Let me tell you that we're now in that technology. And the technology we're at now is computers, they monitor ambient temperatures. How do they achieve that? Y'all see that Samsung over here? Y'all look at this Samsung. Y'all see this up here? This is a Thermista. This Thermista means ambient temperature. Sends that information back to the board. This is your ambient temperature. The day down behind the oh, oh. Ambient temperature under that couple, right? Under that couple. So this all this information is being re related back to the to the board. You understand? The board is receiving information like how many times the doors are being opened. What's the ambient temperature? You know, the, 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 the board is receiving all of this information. Alright? I'm sorry, what is that thing called again? Uh, so ambient temperature sensor. A thermistor. It's a thermistor. But it's, it's, it's reading ambient temperature. Based on the algorithm that is programmed onto the chip, the refrigerator may go into defrost as soon as six hours of runtime, or if the refrigerator doors aren't open for extended periods of time, such as when the customer goes on vacation, the unit may not defrost 72 hours, a full weekend. It will, it will, not, def it will not defrost for a full weekend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, all of us need it. I mean, okay, they're not going to be fast on the back of the streets, you know, to get things to be fast. Unlike the time, it's also going to control. Yes, sir. Control is adaptive, it's reactive. How many times you open the door? How long do you control the default? The adaptive defaults. Control board. Oh, but there is something on here that says, in some of the newer, more advanced systems, this was written 10 years ago. We're at the stage now of those more advanced systems. Those systems look like that LG, where it's just one board. That's the adaptive defrost control board now. That's the that, you know. But the ones with the bio, a lot of the time, those, it's just, just leave us out of that. Timer, eight hours on. They are uh, 30 minutes old. They don't care about any, it, it, it don't rely on all those, that algorithm. So, that's not a control board, but that's a in there, and it just, it's a, 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 but I want to go back to him because he brings up a good point. The one to answer it very simply, if you see it have a, a biometer, more than likely dealing with uh, defrost timing. But I have seen boards that still use defrost timers too. I'm sorry, uh, biometers as well. Refer to Sears Parts Direct, go to your uh, tech sheet, and look at your schematic and see if you're dealing with a timer-based defrost system or board-based default system. And that way, you're 100% certain. All right, any questions so far? Talk about it. Dina. Any questions? Sir? All right. When power is applied to the refrigerator, the board begins to monitor the board. Now we're dealing with this more advanced technology. Now 
not that time, but it's pretty standard. Cool. When power is applied to the refrigerator, the board begins to monitor the operation of the refrigerator. Some of the information that it uses is door openings, compressor runtime, our weighted end up, and when the initial runtime algorithm is satisfied. Typically, eight to 10 hours, the board energizes the default heater. So in the short term, when it hits the desired temp, the temp that you select on the user interface. During defrost, the board monitors how long the defrost thermostat keeps the heater energized. If the, terminate, if the defrost thermostat opens in less than the average 12 minutes, the computer recognizes that amount of frost buildup was very light and automatically increases the amount of runtime defrost by two hours. The refrigerator will now have to run two hours longer before the next defrost is initiated. So basically the computer is taking this information. How long did it take me to get to my target on? And it's doing all these calculations. Or ultimately to just run more efficiently as opposed to that time of eight hours on, eight hours on. Eight hours on, eight hours on. All right. Again, if it takes longer, if it takes longer, longer than twelve minutes, the chip recognizes that the frost buildup was heavier and decreases the time between defrosts by two hours. So maybe the board says, "Okay, maybe I gotta let it run less, defrost more." Again, it's trying to achieve that fine, happy medium where it's not too frosted up and it's not too dry. The computer uh, continues to monitor all of the described conditions and adjust the time accordingly until either upper or lower limits of the algorithms are met. Blah, 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 blah. Let me get you guys some of this stuff. All right. Timer. Timer. So this, there you go. There was your timer. Is that motor? Is that motor? When you put your flat head in, your hair go click, 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 click. And your hair, then click. And then you hear a shorter click, back. And then you hear a shorter click, it'll go click, 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 click. That's when you're using your defaults. When this is a cooling, you'll notice you'll have to turn your screwdriver more times before you hear that big click. As opposed to when this in defrost, it will require less turns. Does that make sense? That's how you know, hey, I done did jobs when in my Brooklyn days. Story time. I done did jobs where I've had defrost failure, right? And it's a top mount that uses a timer and they uses a uh, defrost thermostat. And it was a failure and I just replaced both. And when I replaced both, I put the unit to run, and I get a compressor turn. I steamed it. I did everything by the book. I felt proud of myself, man. Yeah, I was, you know, my, my rookie time, you know, my first defrost. I think I charged the lady like $279 or something. And bro, I put in the timer, and I put in the thermostat, and the unit would turn on, and the lights were on, and everything. Do you know what what what, what happened? Yeah, what was the difference? Somebody said it. What's the What's the difference? What's the difference? When I received the timer, it just so happened that the position of where the dial was, it was the difference. And I didn't know, bro. And bro, I went back, changed time. And the guy said, bro, you turn with the flag. Make sure you, what? Who are you turning? Again, I was a good guy, you know. But that did with my flathead, and <laughs> 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 Alright, so there's your timer. There's your timer modem. They got some new style ones that they clear. You can actually see the gear and moving and stuff. Or some older ones, okay? All right, let's talk about your heaters. Again, they, they typically run them along the bottom of your evaporator. They 
is the glass. Those glasses, when they fail, they won't be clear. But you can see the element. They'll be like a greenish, disgusting color. Like the incredible Hulk juice. <laughs> How would you check that for, for functionality? What kind of test would you perform? What kind of okay. But prior to putting your leads on that, what do you want to first ensure that you're voting? Remember I told you the rookie mistake I made? Okay, Here comes Brother B and his rookie days, thinking he was the man. I'll read all that on the repair clinic or whatever. It's okay, I know how to do it. I'm ready. And I get to it. And I go like this. I don't need a beat. Oh, I got it down. Oh, remember I said, always check your leads. In this case, we would take our home meter and we would go from here to here. Alright? And in our defrost heater, we would go here to here. You see the plugs. Y'all see, y'all done this before, right? Yeah. And if y'all haven't, there's that top model. Alright. We're almost done, guys. Lunch is almost here.
I don't respond as bad. Say that, sir. I don't respond to you as bad. If the Bible doesn't respond to you, you know what kind of If we arrive to the job and it looks like this, should we get continuity, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, I don't know what I'll use to keep up with that. They might be wrong. They might be right back. <laughs> yes or no? I would say if, uh, if it's free, if it's freezing right now, it means activated. So uh, yeah. not activated. So open or close? It should be close. That's what I want y'all. Somebody else stop. Open or close? Close. Does anybody think open? They y'all all might be wrong. Oh, yeah, well, might be right. I want you to open or close? Close. Close. When it warms up, 40 to 60, it will then open to de-energize the element. So, Mr. Brown, I just want to make sure I'm clear that the five elements that are sitting on top of the evaporator have it upside down and you spray it. No, you turn the can upside down and you spray it. The bottom of it, you leave it how it is. Spray that and then what you're looking for is for it to activate and make it possible. Not activate. Close. So, oh. Open or close. That's the only word since the seven years old. When you close it, that means that you're going to take the defrost and just kick on. Now, if you spray it, it doesn't kick on. Well, no, not that it will kick on. Your bone meter is going to give you continuity. Once you spray it, and it gets cold, that bone meter is going to give it continuity. At that point, it's already cut the wire off, right? And have our bone meter hooked up for spray. Well, I'm going to cut the leaves off that quick. Nah, you wouldn't cut them off. You just go wherever the leaves go. At that point, it's a plug. Right. Wherever the plug is, go to the plug. And 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 forget all that, because we're really going to learn how to do it from the board. Right. Look, brother, let's let's skip to the let's skip to the schematics a little bit. Let's skip to the schematics a little bit. Alright. This is what y'all like. Everybody wants schematics, but no one wants the theory. This theory this helps aid with the schematics. That man and Robin. Here's L1. What, what, what two modes did I say that the refrigerator has? You were putting on this. One more time? Cooling and defrost. What does this look like? If, if, if the compressor is running, then. Cooler. If it's running, it's cooler. Anybody care to challenge? If the compressor is running. If the compressor is running, it's in. It's cooler. It's open. Okay, so the bottom I'm sorry, what second? Go ahead. So if it's a compressor going in the school, that means that the bottom is closed, so it's open because it's not turned on. The, 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 the compressor is not running, then that means that, the, uh, that it's in defrost mode, and the bottom is closed. Um, because it's trying to adjust it. But it's not in that mode though. It's in cooling mode. It's in cooling mode. L1 passes through my thermostat. That's the symbol for my thermostat, the electrical symbol. It looks in real life like a little circular. Uh, I brought in the thermostat for you. Top 
it's puffy. Mm -hmm. Or it's a little wedged out. If you notice right now, it's nice and flat. When I pass it around, you'll see it. It's nice and flat. But when it fails, you'll notice that the top is a little puffy. I think you want to pass it down. Also, I want to do a test now while we're here, and I want you to test it for continuity and see what you get. Pass, pass this down with the ball meter as well. All right? So L1 enters, we're in cooling mode. This is, this is, uh, this is the way that the uh, current will flow. It will pass through the thermostat, and notice, it won't go to the heaters. It will rather go to your compressors and your fans. But when it's in defrost, notice, oh, and, and this isn't your thermos, this isn't like the bottom level. Yeah. This is your cold control thermostat. Yeah. Different thermostat, cold control. When we know when you press one, two, that. Right? Uh, okay, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, look. L1 coming in, it passes through your heaters. These heaters are in parallel. So if this one fails, that one will still run. Oh, so the drip plan has a heater? In this particular series, okay. it does. And some you may not see a drip pan. L1 goes through your heaters. It should, that should be running. This may be home. Let me give you another one. I did it last time. That picture's wrong with something. Well, remember, you wouldn't have heating going on with, this is more like, this is more, all right. This is a better uh, picture. All right, here's L1. Coming into our defrost control, right? It comes out pin six, goes over that wire, Okay, so that's just letting us know we got 120. We want to make sure that our board is getting 120. How do you do that? L1 goes into black, and here's your new white. Remember, you need two points of reference to, to verify 120. We just want to make sure we're getting 120 to the board. But hopefully, all right. Now, when it's in cooling mode, this is what will happen. L, uh, 120, 120 will be applied to this. Out of orange, it will pass through your thermostat, go to your fan, go to your compressor, and go to your condenser fan motor. Notice that none of the heater or the bottom metal is being energized. Remember I was telling you all the differences of the two thermostats? Bottom metal, thermostat. This bottom metal is in series with the defrost. Okay? So again, this is cooling mode. Power goes to the board via L1, black, and coming out, pin six, neutral. And then now we have to send that 120 to our compressor and our fans. So again, out of the board, arch, passes through that thermostat, Condenser fan motor, compressor, evaporator fan motor. That's cool. Now let's see defrost. Whole another cycle, whole another circuit. Line one comes into the board, out of your board, out of the number two pin, pin goes over. When y'all see this, the one. When y'all see this, when y'all see a wire, and then you see this kind of board deal, like this right here, that just means like it's going over the wire. You know what I'm saying? Now if you see something like this, then that means right there, they all tied in. What's good here, what's good here, what's good here, what's good here. That's called a note. Am I going too fast or slow? That's called a note. N-O-D. Like right here. This point in the white wire is the same everywhere here. But when you see that, 
that has nothing to do with that water. When you see that little, that means it's not, it has nothing to do with it. Girl, make sense? All right, so our, 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 our heater circuit is on. Where is it going? It's passing first through the bottom of it. What did I tell you? It's in series. If that's open, well, to, you, you answered the question. If that's open, will that be energized? No, we no. Is he wrong or right? He was correct. What energizes my defrost heater? You see this on a lot of refrigerators, test terminal. Have y'all ever gotten to a whirlpool and y'all see like just a, a blank uh, connection by itself with nothing on it? It'll have tape around it or something? It'll be pink and brown. They put that there if you want to check your, your bottom metal. That's cool. Real quick. Because if it's all frosted up, should your contacts be closed or open? If it's all frosted up, it's closed. Cool. So right there. Without having to disassemble, without having to so oh, that's usually at a the board, not that's the, the, the you'll, see, you'll see the connection typically around the board. On on like the built-in ones, sometimes they put them on top. Alright? And then if we wanted to check our, our our if we wanted to check from this board, now now let's get into the board stuff. On my electronic guys testing. We want to check this 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 circuit just from here, the board. Where where what pins would we use? Obviously, you know, this would be a connector, like a pin that you can unplug. Right. Where would we want to put our voltmeter? At what at what numbers will we put our voltmeter to check that needle? And that bottom of the Two and, uh, two and six. Two and six. Two and six. Two and six. We'll check the edit here. All right. That's your answer. Maybe you. Maybe you. What's up? Two and one. No. Yeah. PK. PK. Is that it? What about white and brown? So five and six. All right. Let's do. Oh, let's, say board, right? let's do each one of y'all. What would you say? Uh, from no right or wrong answer. Just, just spin me two numbers. You said five and six. Five and six yeah. All right, look at this. If he check resistance, right, and he put his voltmeter here and here, the only thing he would check is But we need to check our bond level. Oh, we have a deep frost failure. I thought you said that. We have a deep frost Maybe I did. And if I did, great answer. But my question to you is I want to check the entire deep frost circuit from the board. I don't want to disassemble. I don't want to take stuff apart. What do I do? You said two and six. Yeah. What does that mean? That little one. It goes over there. Right there. What's that first destination? And again, if it's all frozen up, that contact should be over. So we would read continuity right back to six. The one. We want to check our continuity, our, our, our defrost circuit. Two. Guys, y'all say this now in the class. <laughs> one and six is two, two, though, right? Let's check one and six. Which one? One would just be black. Yeah. But black has no contact with that circuit. Oh, because it's got to that pin. Because it goes like this. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It comes in from the black. Right. Think of it like this. Rather than looking at it like this, let's look at it a different way. Imagine that 
you had board send in voltage to defrost timer, I'm sorry, defrost to the bottom metal, to the heater. But one train has to be uh, present at all times. Okay? From your wall, you got three holes in that receptacle. You got one, a longer one, and then a little guy here. Write this down. We're testing the uh, receptacle. We're also going to check polarity. The reason I'm getting into that is because I need him to understand why this black wire don't got nothing to do with that. But this is going to help the class. We get to a circuit, uh, a receptacle, and this is what we got. This guy, this guy's a little longer and a little hole there. This is the, the, the long one, neutral. Neutral. This one, L1. This one, ground. The one, if I put my bone meter from ground to L1, what would I get? That's correct. L1 to ground, 120. What happens when I go neutral to ground? Is he right or wrong? Right. He's wrong. Oh, it's not going to get it. If he goes neutral to ground, he's going to get zero. Zero. What is L1 to neutral? That's Okay. So we got L1. Coming in. That board gotta get 120. It gotta get 120. In order for it to give other components 120. How you gonna ask the, the, the evaporator fan for 120 if the board ain't getting 120? It gotta have 120. So we where is it getting 120 from? From this L1 black to this neutral pin six. What? If you erase everything that you see here and just concern yourself with this and this, at that point, that board got 120. Right. If you stop right there, that got 120. So this guy got 120. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. Check. Well, we got to get 120 to that and that. We gotta get 120 to that and that. So we gotta make sure this is good before we make sure any of that is good. Right. That's why I had to verify 120 first coming into the board. Yeah. We do that through L1 and through uh, pin six neutral. Right. So to answer your questions, you cannot go from one to that heater circuit. That heater circuit is only in line with pin two. These two wires do not come in contact. Yeah, sure. That's why I drew that. Yeah. Okay? Now, let's talk about the cooling circuit. Can I ask a question? Yes. You can okay. ask two, three, four. Um, all right. Uh, you said can't, you can check the, you can, you know you got 120 at the board by checking, isn't it? One and six? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you said, you said no. that. Okay, okay. That ensures 120 just to the board. Okay. Pins one and six. Okay. Let's write it down. Pins one and six, board. Pin one through six is for the board. And we said that the bottom metal was pin. Pin two, six. Two and six for the cert for the default circuit. Two to six. We said heater. In theory, he called it out. We could go here. Five, five, ground. But that would just tell us our heater. 
it would probably be more effective, more, you know, easier if you check off on the, on the whole entire system. Yeah. You know? That's like uh, isolation. Yes. And then how does the heater? Same thing. It gets it from P2, uh, P2 and 6. Same thing, okay? It's all in the same circuit. But now, that's our defaults. Now we're going to talk about our cooling. How does the evaporator fan get 120? What pins? Can you move the pin up a little bit? Up or down? Up a little bit. No, no, up, go up. Right there, yeah. Okay. I'll do uh, I'll do three and four. Yep. What wait? Is that is that, that a, is, is that a, yeah, three and four. That's what I'll do. Three and four now you should have a current step down. Yeah, you're gonna start clicking something. Right? When when you don't pull, it'll click on you see the arrow there? It's gonna push it down. Sorry, no, it's like no, it's taking the cooling part. Or maybe compress it If we're checking at the pins, I yeah. guess you're right. Yeah, all the way to the pins. Three and four, yeah. But I'm only in the red, right? You can't check. Uh, okay, what numbers? Yeah, don't, don't, because you got there, you don't need the thing right. But they might be. But that's the thing. Okay. Yeah, 
paragraph 46. Yeah, and I was thinking because it we enters it. the board. I'm sorry. Comes out orange, passes through the thermostat. This is parallel circuit. Yeah. Condenser fan, compressor circuit, evaporator fan circuit. It goes out to neutral. There's no way for us to check that. Right. So they give us that yeah. while right there. Take that off. Take that off. You good, bro? She was good with the peak. So we got, I got cousins at home. And uh, I've been to their house a couple times to fix yeah. the fire. Yeah. Right here. I'm listening. There's a two, two, three, three, three. Uh, remove those Phillips. I'm sorry. So, uh, we went over there before. Prior. You, I'm, this is being. Oh. Do you mind talking? Or do you want to have this conversation I'll later? Oh, that looks nice. Look at that. This guy looks like he's done this before. We're gonna, we're gonna do the, the troubleshooting actually from the board, uh, from the time itself. What's good, Untamed? We got some people tapped in. How this class going, y'all? Y'all like it? Almost done, guys. What's good, my apps? Y'all see how y'all see what's going down in the academics? All right, there goes that thermostat. It goes that, where's P there? No, the other P there. There's that thermostat. Okay. 
There's that timer. Go ahead and take that timer off. They got those little two plastic clips. You may want to alleviate it. All right, gotcha. Three of them. All right, take that harness out. <clears throat> Somebody said to me, <clears throat> you literally just put your voltmeter in? Yes, you literally put your voltmeter in. You put it in right here. Can somebody give me a voltmeter? You put them in right here. Oh, yeah, back broke. Yeah. Let's try to... So, so we're looking at uh, blue, the blue? No, no, no. We don't have the schematic on this, oh, so we right. don't know, um, you know. I just want to show you, like, how, how we would do it. You would go like this, bro. You put put them in there. Put it in any one. Make sure they're nice and snug. Now plug in your timer. Now imagine that that timer was a board, Peter. That's how you would do that test to verify output voltage. Does that make sense? Just like that. We can move your hand now. Plug, plug it all the way oh, in. Uh, all yeah, way. all the way in, all the way in, all the way. All right, now move your move your hand. Or the vote meter will fall out. There you go. That's how that would look, like that. You understand? Then you would check your output voltage for 120. No, brother, you have to come here. Look, we just got finished saying. Mind you, this isn't a timer. This is not a timer. This is a board. But I'm showing you where you put your vote meter at when you do these tests. Um, You would go here, orange. Do that thermostat, go into that condenser fan, motor, compressor, evaporator fan. But we can't measure that. that. That's nowhere to be found. But we could go here and measure at that number six. Okay. And you do that kind of test like I just represented there at the timer. Okay. You will plug in your voltmeter okay. there. Okay. And then you will measure voltage, resistance, stuff like that. Okay. Do you understand now? Okay. So what about this one though? How do, you, how do you test that? Well, out of that, it would look like this. It would come out of pin five. No, okay. out of pin, this pink pin here. It would go over and then it would go through that bimetal, which is in series with that uh, heater. But we can't test up there, but we can test here. So we can go six to two. Okay. I thought it was a way to test everything. But, the, but you are testing everything. I mean, at the same time. You are. You're testing the entire circuit. Look, you're testing two, heater, I mean by metal, heater. So we testing our default circuit. That's the entire default circuit. Now, if you want to test all this, well, that would be a little bit different. We have to, okay, I thought you could do everything with one test. No. Okay, that's how, that's how no. I was thinking. Okay, that's Did, how I was thinking. You, you, you test this circuit, they all circuits. Everybody has his or her own independent circuit. Okay. Like this compressor has its own circuit. You know, this overload is in series with this compressor, which is in series with this PTC, which is in series with a capacitor. You know, and then it goes to, to so this is just this circuit for the compressor. This is the circuit for the condenser, this red and white. This is the circuit for the EVAP. This red, white, and white. This is the circuit for the defrost heater, brown and white. This is it for the bottom metal, brown, pink. So everything has his or her own circuit. You understand? Yeah. This thermostat is orange to red. Okay. You understand? When you, what, you try, what we doing is just doing it in, uh, like the whole circuit. You understand? That's one and six. That's this. And one and six is just the board. One, I mean two, one and six. So you got 120 coming into the board, 120 coming out of the board. That we know the board got 120. Mm -hmm. And in order for the board to get 120, it gotta send 120 to the defrost heater to the heater. I mean, to the bimetal, to the heater. See, pins one, six, two, six, two, six. One, six, that's the board. Okay, got it, Jay. Six. Six, Okay. Got it? Trace it out with your hand. The four seater, it's there. Four seater. Beautiful. Okay. You got it, man. Show me the EVAP fan. 
Fan. Just start here. Where's the email? Okay. Um, what color? Why is that? Red, white. To so white. That's it. That's your. That's your. That's your circuit for your evap. Show me the circuit for the um. Red, white. Just get familiar with your with your component. Orange, red for this circuit. Uh, just. Why does it go from red to white? How does that? Work? Look, cause brother, you come down here, red to white. Look. Not saying that this is the colors you're gonna get, but look. No, but look. How many, there's your condenser fan. How many wires you see down here? Hold on. Take, take that Molex off. What color, what color wires you see down there? You see that 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 fan needs two two reference points of 120. Mm -hmm. That's how it will be get energized. Mm -hmm. That's why you only see two colors down there. Mm -hmm. Go into that fan motor. Mm -hmm. That's why you only see two colors. Come over here to the schematic. And that's why you only see two colors going over here. Red, white. Gotcha. You understand now? So to that fan motor, you're only going to get red, white. And that one is red and blue, but this schematic isn't applicable to that fridge. You understand now? All right. All right, guys, any questions? Talk about it. Yes, sir. I love off point. Talk to me about off point. What are we talking about? Like, I saw a guy on about to sign off, y'all. Yeah. 
Everything good, y'all? Yeah. All right, let's wrap up here. Let's talk about this jazz board. Let's look at this schematic here. This is a nice one. We got a unit that's not defrosting. First component I like to locate is my defrost heater. Is it turning on or off? Why is that ice there? That, that's not normal. It's supposed to be all, all, all melted off. It's not supposed to look like this. That's not good. So, I want to locate my defrost heater. Now that I located my defrost heater, I want to see what's in that circuit. So, here's my heater. I got this defrost bimetal and a board. Let me zoom out a little. Pin seven. So let's follow it. No, oh, no, no. Uh, sorry. Pin uh, five. Brown. Defrost heater. All right. So that's the side that energizes the heater. But we have to check it's neutral. So let's locate that neutral. Guys, come up here. Neutral the one. Is, is there a dot there? Or, or a Forget back? about the dots. Just imagine there's no dots. We got to find L1 and neutral to this circuit here, this defrost circuit. This is our two components that we're concerned about, the thermostat and the heater. So what are our colors of our wires? Let's start with that. Uh, is it brown? Yep. Right here, BR. Yeah, yeah, brown and white. Brown. And white. Where does white return to the board? Uh, neutral, it comes here, uh, and then comes on white. Uh, so all right, step over now. Come here, brother. Show me what he did. Okay. That defrost heater, we want to check it from the board. We want to know if it's, if it's operating. Here's our board, Jazz PCB, printed circuit board. Look at what they're telling us on here. L1, defrost, FF, stat, L1, COMP, compressor. Like, they're telling us little things, but let's let's look for the heater. Okay. Let's go in. Five, brown, and this is white. So you go back to the board. You got it. One. Good job, bro. Five and one. Right. You got it, bro. No man left behind. Casey? Do you? Everybody? So, so this is L1. And so we already considered that these here points are uh, neutral. How does the board get 120? Show me how the board is getting 120. From uh, the neutral here? Show me. Follow it with your finger. Oh, yeah. Right to the board. Yeah, right here. So we will put one lead in pin one. Right. And where will we put our other lead? Where's? I know, I know you said it's pin five from the, uh, for the heater. You sure right. it's pin five? Yeah. I'm saying the board is getting L1. That's how the heater's oh, getting okay, L1. Okay, copy. That's right. All right. So we got pin seven and pin one. No. Nope. Look at seven. Follow seven with your hand. Follow it up with well, your hand. Yeah, that's a common No, right we're looking for one. L1. All right. So this is L1. Oh, now oh, follow. Mine, all right, my, my bad. Follow that with your hand. Yeah, right. That's your L one. L one and this L two. Mm -hmm. Neutral. Neutral. It looks like hitch from from that side. Yeah. All right, bro. No. No. Hitch. So oh, then yeah. when we look, test this here, one fifteen VAC between here and here. That's what that is. That's your ground. Copy. One fifteen here to there. All right. So you got one twenty coming in. Yeah. To pin six. Right. That's that's our L1 to the, just the, to the board. Right. Remember, it can't give any L1. It can't give any power or anything if if it's not even getting L1. Copy. So L1 went first to the board. Right. And then neutral. Show me neutral. Neutral's right here. Right here. Yep. Yep. L1. I mean, um, neutral. This, this is neutral. So we automatically consider all of these are tapped into that L1. And that neutral. Yeah. This got to get power before it could distribute it anywhere. Copy. But we have to verify that it's getting power. Right. You verify that by going L1, pin 6, neutral, pin 1. Right. So now we're testing this heater, though. Right. Now we're testing the heater. Now we're testing the heater. We got neutral right here. 
and the heater is tapped into L1 right here. Mm -hmm. Right, so that gives us. Our, but not not necessarily L1 like that, but the yeah. L1 sod. The L1 board is providing yeah, it. It's right, not coming right. from the wall. Right, right. It's coming from the board, board yeah. to the to the heater. All right, gotcha. All right, all right. And then we'll get into the cooling after lunch. Cool. All right, where it goes here, evaporator fan. Number eight. Okay, so this would be your evaporator fan. One of the six is power, is that right? One to six is uh, voltage. Uh, no, one to six. Yeah, L1. Yeah, L1. is uh, 120 to the board. Yeah, okay. That's the volt. That's the board supply. And then this this evaporator fan will get its 120 from. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, black red. And where does this? Oh no, you know why? Cause it's in it's in it's in uh, parallel. So this is being energized. Uh, what else is being energized? The switches, ice maker. Let me see. I'm all over the road myself now. Hold on. Red, red, red. Okay, red. Okay, so red, white. Okay, damper. Where's my condenser? Where's my condenser fan? Does this have a condenser fan? Compressor, condenser motor, right here. All right, okay, so compressor, okay, so all right, all right, I got it now. I'm, I was all over the place. Okay, so my 120 to my compressor, my condenser will come from this one here. Uh, pin seven, all right, parallel, back to neutral. So that's how this guy gets this 120. I'm worried about this evaporator fan though. I would check. Uh, black, red, uh, pin number seven. Wait, is that seven? No, eight. Eight, two, six. Eight to six? Yep, like this. Uh, six. Gotcha. And, oh no, right here. And then the other one. Yeah, eight. Gotcha. eight to six. Eight to six. Everybody get that? Eight to six for the evaporator fan. Right here, black, red. And then here. Eight and six. No, what, what did we say? Eight and six, you're right, because see, there's L1. No, no, but there's no eight. Eight, oh, right here. Eight right yeah, here. yeah, eight here. So that's a different pin. No, the same board, but J2, board, J2 pin, pin and J1, J1 pin. pin. So yeah. J2 pin eight to J1 pin one. Yeah. No, no, pin six, J1 pin, pin six, six pin six. J2 pin eight. eight. Yes, right, gotcha. J1 pin six, oh, I'm sorry, here, to J2 pin, pin eight. eight. Yeah. There you go, good job. Lunchtime, guys. Good class, everybody. I'll take care of this. Let's go with the YouTube community. Y'all liking this class? What's up? How y'all tapped in? Thank y'all for watching, man. Y'all good? We're gonna go to lunch now. TMMacademics.com. Guys, next class is gonna be board repair, and then after that, our next hands-on is gonna be uh, schematic uh, training to be held by me and Rick. All right? Y'all have a good one.